Hey everybody and welcome to Reality Check. It's time to talk graphics technology once again, and this week it's the turn of global illumination. In-game lighting is one of the biggest assets developers have at their disposal when creating beautiful game worlds. It's crucial for conveying mood, emotion and a realistic aesthetic. The real talk of the lighting town these days though is global illumination or GI. But what exactly is it? How does it work? And could it really be the future of lighting in video games? I think the best way to try and understand the power and importance of global illumination is to compare traditional computer-generated lighting with real life. For example, here we have two versions of the same scene. On the left is something I set up and filmed in our studio, and on the right is a digital scene I made in the software Motion 5. Now granted, Motion 5 isn't used to make games, it's designed for making motion graphics, but the principle is the same. In both scenes, a bright spotlight is shining on a white table surface, illuminating it. Now what happens when we move something in front of the light source, say a red rectangle? Well, as we see in both cases, the rectangle casts a shadow. But what's the difference? Well, in the computer-generated scene, when the light is blocked or occluded, the resulting shadow is black. Not grey or very, very dark grey, but black. A complete absence of light. In real life, that doesn't happen. And this is because light bounces. It bounces off walls, off objects, even off me. This results in the photons, the tiny packages of light energy, bouncing back onto the shaded area of the table and lighting it a little. This extra bounce light is what global illumination brings to computer-generated lighting. To help explain more about this tech, I tracked down three global illumination experts. David Llewellyn from Unity, Epic's Nick Penwarden, and Rodrigo Cortez from Massive Entertainment, the studio behind the upcoming open world game The Division. Well, global illumination isn't actually particular to computer games. It's a, a set of tools that are available, if you like, to artists to simulate the bounce and the interaction of, of lights and surfaces in the real world. In the real world, you know, light comes from a source, it, um, it hits a surface, from that surface it then diffuses and bounces onto other surfaces, taking with it properties like, you know, colour. So first of all, it's, uh, it's a tool that artists have to, uh, to just light their levels more easily. For example, um, you add a sun to your level, right? And I have an indoor area, and rather than having to add uh, lights in myself to try to simulate what that bounce light is, I can just have the sun uh, add all that bounce light automatically. So what game designers are essentially doing now with GI is mimicking how light behaves in real life. Although, it's not quite the same. Cutting edge GI in games allows for the computing of maybe two or three bounces of light at most. Real life light, however, keeps on bouncing around surfaces and objects, illuminating as it goes. That's a heck of a lot more information to compute. And this, interestingly, is why it's easier to mimic real life light in CGI movies and animations. Because the movie making process gives artists the luxury of time and processing power, a single frame can afford to take a whole day and be rendered by a huge bank of super powerful machines. Video games, however, can't really do the same. The problem with games is that you have to do this 30, 60, 100 times a second to sort of achieve playable frame rates. Um, so a lot of the work will actually be handled offline. We use light maps commonly as a technique for baking GI. So that is um, pre-computing the, the bounce of light and then writing that onto a texture. That unfortunately is static in many cases and that's, that's the real innovation of, of the current technologies that are available is that they allow you to do this, this manipulation. Um, we can actually change the, the qualities of the light, we can move the lights around and we can see the effects of that in real time in the game. Now, as David alluded to, in-game lighting can either be static or dynamic, and global illumination is no exception to this. Static GI has actually been around for a number of years, and can be really useful as all the heavy lifting of the processing is done ahead of time. This is sometimes known as pre-rendering or baking. The downside, though, is that this cannot update on the fly, and this is where Dynamic GI really wins out, and it's what's got developers so excited. Game engines Unity, Epic and Snowdrop are just three examples which are capable of employing this new Dynamic GI technology. But as we've heard, it's very demanding. So are these new-gen consoles really powerful enough to run it? 
Definitely. The, the way they're built, uh, first with uh, many cores and uh, a lot of memory and very programmable uh, graphics, uh, graphic chips. There's never uh, before been so much uh, possibilities to do things like global illumination. And in, in our case, the division is coming out for PS4 and Xbox One, and it, it takes advantage of, of the hardware to, uh, to the fullest, and we can achieve a really amazing look with global illumination. With Unity 5 they can. We now have Enlighten um, out of the box, which means that artists um, can exploit the, the technologies that are now available to, to change the lighting in their scenes much more realistically um, at render time. You can see Fable Legends running on Xbox One using uh, light propagation volumes in UE4. And there are some other solutions that sit somewhere on that range from, from the fully dynamic uh, solution of LPV and the uh, fully precomputed solution of light mass. We're all start trying to search for this one solution that's going to be fully dynamic, that will work in just the general case, get super high quality um, and be practical on this generation. I don't think we've found that yet, um, but, uh, but we're all trying, right? Ah, if only there had been more of them. So that's what the current generation of consoles can give us now in terms of lighting. But let's finish by looking forward and ask what the ideal future might be able to offer. I mean, ultimately we want to be able to just procedurally generate a world, blow a hole in a wall, right? You open a door, you can see the sunlight spilling into a room. Um, you want those, those interactions with light that you expect to just work, right? Um, and from the point of view of, of building a world, you want to be able to uh, take a light and just drag it into the level and move it around, and all of the bounce lighting is updating in real time, dynamically. That, that's where we want to get. The nirvana, if you like, of, of games, I think, is when we, we have the hardware and we have the, the, the computational power available to us to actually do real-time ray tracing on the fly, where anything can move, because we're just rendering photons bouncing around and hitting a camera. Um, if a player moves through the room, the colours from his, his outfit are actually affecting the colours on the surfaces around him. Actually doing that, you know, rather than using the, the techniques that we have to use currently to, to simulate that effect. Well, that's it for another episode of Reality Check, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, let me know what you thought in the comments down below or by sending me a tweet at CamFrazRob. We'll be back next week for yet more science and video games. So see you then.